Last Epoch is a great game, and it's better than Diablo 4 in many ways, and not in the ones that people are talking about. Now, if you want more information about how endgame systems work and how this game is for hardcore ARPG players, there are a ton of creators that have already talked about it and that you should go watch. These are creators that I myself watch whenever a game like this comes out. Rax, Z's, DM, uh, Darth Microtransaction TV, even Asmongold. But those guys really tend to cover these games for the hardcore. And the majority of the player base does not play for thousands of hours. They play the campaign maybe once, twice, three times. They enjoy it and then they walk away. Maybe they come back, maybe they don't. And I think Last Epoch is excellent for that casual audience as well. I want to talk about why it's so much better than Diablo 4, how it really is a game that had to be designed by people that truly understand this genre and what makes it appealing. But before we can do that, I do need to address the server issues. It's 2024 and at this point, it's a toss up. You either need to play the game as soon as it comes out before the servers get overloaded, like the case with Helldivers 2, or the more common one, no, games don't launch the day they come out. The game has been suffering from server issues. However, the community's response has also been very exaggerated. This is a game that can be played fully offline. The 1.0 launch is something that you can enjoy right now, even if you can't connect to the servers, which I think is a good pro. Obviously, it's not the reason that everybody wants to play. People want to get on the servers. They want to participate in the online functionality of the game. It's unfortunate. These things happen all the time. Games are complicated things to get working. And very often, a lot of developers, especially smaller ones, underestimate how many players they're going to get in their game. And we have these launches. Now, this isn't an excuse. It doesn't matter if you're an indie game or a AAA game or anything at all. These botched launches that keep giving problems and makes games borderline unplayable to paying customers is unacceptable. Having said that, they have been working less than 24 hours later. Things have been up and running. There is a completely functional offline mode. And more importantly, some of the stuff people are saying are ridiculous. I took some screenshots to give examples, but a lot of the language there I'm kind of afraid to put up on YouTube. If you really want to see how people are treating the developers and the game, the Discord is public. You can go check it out or just check Twitter or YouTube comments. While this is 100% worthy of criticism, we shouldn't forget civility. But I don't want this video to be about that. I want it to be about those great things that Last Epoch brings that other ARPGs can learn from. And those existed before the 1.0 launch and they will continue to exist once we get over all of these launch issues. So. Let's talk about that. I've seen a lot of content creators talk about Last Epoch like it's a middle ground between Diablo 4 and PoE. If Diablo 4 is very enjoyable, very approachable and accessible to newer players right from the start, but once you reach that endgame, it starts to taper off very quickly in the fun department and in the complexity department, and PoE starts off absolutely terrible, you gotta read a certain number of encyclopedias to get into the very fun parts of the game later on, Last Epoch is somewhere in the middle, and I couldn't disagree more. Because I think it's very close in accessibility to Diablo, and I also think it's way more fun right off the bat, even if it keeps peaking after Endgame. Now, I haven't experienced the 1.0 Endgame because the servers are broken, but it's also not the focus of what I want to talk about. From what I hear, it's serviceable. Instead, what I want to talk about is how it leverages what people really want from this genre or what I think that people want. And no, not just the hardcore players, but anybody who plays ARPGs. I think people play these games to discover cool stuff that makes them do tons of damage using cool skills against different mobs and bosses. Every time that we find a unique item that changes one of our skills into something crazy and gives us an excuse to explore a different build and make it work just because it's fun to use, we're happy. Diablo 4 was definitely lacking, especially at launch. Don't know how it's doing now. I gave that game my 130 hours and, I, and I'm happy with that amount. But especially at launch was lacking in some of those more transformative items. But what Last Epoch shows is that even though it does have a ton of different items that do definitely transform your builds and your skills and makes you play differently, they don't need to come from special rare late game drops. What we really crave is the opportunity to try a bunch of different cool stuff and mix and match different parts of our gear and our builds in order to theory craft and then execute on 
something that's fun to do. That simple. And why do I know Last Epoch understands this and executes on it? Very simple. That same rush you get of watching a skill transform into something different with a unique is something that Last Epoch offers you all of the time. Every single skill, individual skill in Last Epoch of all the ones that you can slot in, be they for the base class or any of the three masteries that each of the five base classes has, has their own skill tree. These are quite big and very transformative for the skills in many different ways, opening up the possibility for making builds that a new player approaching the game for the first time and just playing through the campaign can enjoy. There's no limitation on respecking, so you can just grab any skill and completely change it into something else and have fun with it. Could this be overwhelming? Yes, I personally don't feel like it's very overwhelming. I guess I'm more on the hardcore side, while not being a person that professionally plays these games, right? But I did not feel overwhelmed at all. The hardest part of the accessibility, in my opinion, for this entire system that offers so much flexibility and a constant source of that joy you get of, oh, I can turn this into this other thing. How would that affect things? What do I need to change now? Is the fact that you have to sit down and read through all the skill trees to figure out what's going on with each of them. And there's a lot of abilities. So as long as you're okay with that, you're going to have a constant rewarding time whenever you do anything in Last Epoch. You're going to look forward to your level ups more than you would in a game like Diablo 4, where there is that linearity of, yes, there are different things and different choices to make relevant to some of the skills, but they're not really that transformative. Those come in the late game, and that late game has a lot of awkward pacing issues and just a lot of problems in general. For as much as the open world and the very epic cinematic nature of Diablo 4 helps in appealing to a casual base, it also leads to quite a terrible pacing when you just want to play the game. Last Epoch doesn't do that and understands that, for me at least, I think, even the most casual players just want to jump in, fight thousands of bad guys, and test out how many crazy things they can come up with to do that. And it puts that at your fingertips faster than any other ARPG, in my opinion. I've played a lot of ARPGs. I don't remember feeling this empowered to just do whatever I want with skills and explore different possibilities without needing to follow any sort of build guide ever. Because in Diablo, you either put on the easy difficulty and the chips fall where they may, or you might as well just follow a build guide if you're just going to chase a specific end game build. And that kind of repeats for a lot of other games as well. But Last Epoch, gives you that freedom that makes it so engaging right from the start. The experience is also so fast paced and full of mobs right from the start, and they offer alternative leveling paths for your other characters that wanting to jump back in and explore a different mastery within the same class or a completely different class is something that I think more people will end up doing in this game compared to others. The experience is overall more fun to do, I don't know if it's longer or shorter than some other games. I don't have that on hand. I'm not going to compare this to Grim Dawn or Wolson. I didn't play Wolson. That's the only one I haven't played. I lied. Or Diablo. But I know for sure that I had a lot more fun playing multiple different classes and leveling them up. And that is because to me, and I know fun is like a very relative, very subjective word, right? To me, what's fun about a game like this is having the ability to discover my own builds. That's a lot of the fun that comes in late game, is theory crafting and maxing out every little lever to make the most out of the idea you have of, this is my game plan, now I have to make it work. And Last Epoch trusts that part of these games much more than others do. Where other games, instead of going deep into that build craft part of them, they just say, hey, here's flashy numbers, pick something, pretty much everything will work, and then things will require extra effort to work later on. Last Epoch says, you can get through it without making it work. But look at all of these things that you can play with. Look at all of these ideas that you can mix together. Put stuff in, see how much you can change things, and enjoy that experience of coming up with your own build and doing so. 
And I do not think that incorporating that the way that it does reduces its accessibility. I think it's very easy to follow and pushes this part of these games forward. And that's something that a lot of people that don't traditionally reach Endgame are going to discover here and very much enjoy. It does have some more complicated parts to it. It has a lot of different gear slots and a lot of things to maximize, a lot of drops to get. It has its own crafting system, which can be a little bit confusing to completely new players. Its campaign can sometimes have some difficulty spikes and be a little bit obtuse in some of its map design. It's not perfect, but the core idea of what it considers to be fun is something that I agree with. And it's something that I haven't seen pushed this forward in an ARPG ever. Aside from that, it also does have a ton of polish in so many other areas. If there's one thing in the 1.0 release that completely floored me was how good it looks now. It is night and day compared to how it looked before. Everything has been polished up from icons to effects to animations. The sound design and volume mixing was great before. It's even better now. There's a lot of stuff here that even AAA big releases screw up like that volume mixing. You want your sounds to be really meaty and enjoyable so that when you press buttons, every feedback system is enjoyable. But a lot of the times the balance of that is off with some sounds being too loud or some abilities just not sounding good or being obnoxious. Haven't had that here. Granted, haven't played every class, every ability, but but so far I've played four different classes and masteries before 1.0 and one during 1.0 and haven't had anything like that stand out. And that's something a lot of games get wrong. And ultimately it just understands what to give you and to just deliver it to you without any nonsense. You jump into the game, you fight a ton of stuff, you go into menus, you decide what crazy idea you want to do, you do it, it works or it doesn't, and you have a ton of fun. It plays beautifully, it innovates and does something that I haven't seen done this way before that I think will be a huge hit with a lot of people, and it does all of that for $35 compared to the $70 microtransaction filled expansion bound Diablo 4. I think this is a game that deserves your time. If you're not going to play it for 200 hours, that's fine. If you want to know how good the experience is for people to dedicate that long, like I said, there's creators that will guide you in the right direction for that sort of stuff. I'm here to do something different. I don't know half as much about these games but the perspective that I can offer that's unique is, is this a fun game that has really good ideas that are not just for the hardest of hardcore, but also for people jumping in? Yes. And that's the part that we're not talking enough about. There's a lot of, it's a hardcore game made by people who really understand ARPGs and want to give us that end game experience for the pure hardcore fans. And I think that the greatest trick that Last Epoch pulls off is that if you know very little or nothing about ARPGs and you jump into it, it will turn you faster into a hardcore fan than almost any game unless you were playing Diablo 2 when that came out. So yeah, really smart game. Absolutely love it. Not perfect. Nothing is. 100% recommend it to the audience I'm referring to for the, for the end game stuff. Don't know. For casuals, you want to spend anywhere between 30 and 100 hours exploring a game and having a good time go get Last Epoch. I strongly recommend it. Uh, I'm going to be playing more of it. I don't know if I'll do any more content on it. I'm going to keep playing it on my own time, which is very rare these days. Recently, if I'm not at my job, I'm making videos or playing something for videos. But this one, I've liked so much, I'm going to find some time to just chill out and enjoy it. So I thought it was worth talking about that. I've been Mug Thief. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of video, something a little bit different trying to give different perspectives on stuff in games subscribe you get more of it if you thought what i said in this video is something other people should hear hit the like button because that helps the video reach more people thank you so much for watching and as always i'll see you again very soon